Thanks for your time today, wherever you may be and whatever you may be doing as part of our army and in the service of our nation. At the beginning of the year, I offered that 2023 would be a year of opportunity. And today, our government has delivered clear direction on the implementation of the Defence Strategic Review, or DSR as it's known. And in doing so, created opportunities for our nation, our ADF and our army. Implementation of the DSR is an important part of Australia's response to the significant and rapidly changing circumstances across the world. And importantly, their potential impacts on our way of life, our quality of life, and those of our allies and our partners. For the ADF, there is a pressing need to adapt more quickly to the changing character of war, to fulfil our purpose, to deter conflict and protect Australia's national interest. Army's contribution to the defence of our nation will continue be, to be delivered through our expert contributions to the integrated force, to other government agencies and to our allies and our partners. Some of our teammates are going to require a lot of help to deliver the capabilities required of them. And as ever, we'll be there for them because service, that is placing our mission and our mates before ourselves, is what it means to be an Australian soldier. In Army, we'll continue our path of ambitious and focused transformation in order to be truly future ready. And I think we're well positioned to do so as we build on the solid foundation of today's Army. As the DSR makes clear, we need to adapt quickly to the rapidly changing character of war. At the same time, we must not forget that war is and will continue to be a truly human endeavour. Nowhere are the tensions, the challenges and the consequences of this reality more evident and more profound than in the prosecution of war on the land and among populations. Indeed, as we pause this Anzac Day to remember the service and the sacrifice of those whom have gone before us, we are reminded of the visceral and enduringly human nature and human cost of war. The names of the more than 102,000 Australian servicemen and women who made the ultimate sacrifice, and in particular for us, the 81,745 soldiers among their number are an ever-present and powerful reminder. We dedicate our thoughts on Anzac Day and our actions every day to be worthy of their legacy and the wonderful endowment they've created for Australia and Australians today. To be sure, putting Australian soldiers on the ground and in harm's way remains the ultimate expression of our nation's will and resolve. So the challenge for us today is to ensure that we are adapting fast enough to be equal to the challenges of tomorrow. In particular, the challenges po posed by new and emerging technology. Here, we have some more work to do. To be truly future ready, we must continually adapt. There are changes in what our government expects of its army and what the integrated force and our allies and partners need of us. There will be a significantly smaller, but no less capable combined arms fighting system. We'll accelerate delivery of our long range fires and littoral manoeuvre capabilities. Our formations will become more specialised and we will increase the use of robotics and autonomous systems, artificial intelligence and quantum technology. There will also be changes to the scale and scope of our capabilities, the sequence and pace of delivery, how we're organised, how we train and the resources that will be available to us. Things will be different and along with the opportunities there will be some challenges. Some of the detail is described in the public version of the DSR that was released earlier today and I encourage all of you to read it. 
but there is some more work to be done to confirm the detail of how we will reposture and restructure our army. And I intend to share that with you by the end of August. It's going to require us to use our imaginations to leverage the incredible capacity for innovation across our army and to work together as a team. I am very confident that we are equal to the challenges that lay before us. And my confidence is founded in what I witness you doing every day, as individuals and as teams, at home and overseas, in our communities, and alongside our international partners. Rebuilding our operational readiness, achieving excellence across the vast and impressive breadth of missions of which our Army is capable, from humanitarian assistance to combat operations. And importantly, living our values, service, courage, respect, integrity, and excellence in real and meaningful ways every day. I couldn't be more proud of you and I couldn't be more proud of our Army. I'm relying on you to continue to earn and maintain trust in our Army, in our community and the government we, we serve. I'm relying on you to continue to build readiness so that we are ready now and future ready. I'm relying on you to make the very best use of the people, machines, time and money with which we are trusted. And I'm relying on you to help to tell the truly amazing story of our army, past and present, and to be an active participant in writing the next chapter of our history. I'm relying on each of you and every one of our teams to do the very best you can with whatever you have, wherever you may be, every day. That is our standard. I am genuinely humbled to lead our army during this inflection point in our history. And I feel both privileged and grateful to be serving alongside each and every one of you. Thank you for your service in our army, an army in the community, and an army for the nation.